Hey, what's up, Corey? Happy Monday, school. How you doing? Hey, happy Monday, school. Doing well, doing real well. How you doing? Oh man, I'm I'm living the dream. I'm living the dream. We got some new sponsors, and I'm pumped. I am so pumped. Absolutely. Here, I'll I'll go first. I got yeah, a great go sponsor here. I've got Don Dish Soap, staying uh, clean, fighting the virus. Amen. Hey, despite what despite what Trump said, do not inject this stuff in yourself. Yeah, don't gargle that. Don't gargle that. <laughs> Our old faithful Mountain Dew and the Cincinnati Reds are sponsoring us today as well. Go ahead. What else you got? Awesome. I've got um you'll like this one. Got a mm. big old trophy. I think this is from the uh the high school dodgeball tournament. So oh. Uh, Love. Competed several times, never won, but I still get the trophy. Same, same. Hey, listen, it is a. I just signed a new sponsor, J Hats. The letter J Hats. Okay, you know I'm a well, hat you guy. You ready? Boom. Coons I'm ready. Hat. Look, at, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> that's right. Hey, that's right. So. Hey, uh, every is, time I say J hats, they give me five dollars. Five dollars. Are you gonna start wearing those on Tuesdays instead of flannel Sunday? You got J hat Tuesdays. J hat. We'll see. We'll see. Hey, we better <laughs> quit the noise. We better get down to right. down to business. What we got today, man? Absolutely. Hey, we're starting a new series. It is titled Mission Possible. All right. I I love this series. But hey, when I was in junior high and high school, I loved a book series titled Alex Ryder. Looked just like this. And what Alex Ryder was, was it is this 14-year-old kid uh, from England who went to school during the week, but on the weekends was a spy for MI6. Uh, nobody suspected him because he was so young. Um, and it was just awesome uh, reading about him and his stories and all the the danger and peril that he got into. You know, secret agents are, are given a, a lot of things. They're, the biggest thing is that they are often given a mission, right? Uh, but in order to carry out those missions, they often construct fake identities and disguises. But more than just that, secret agents are tough, they're driven, they're smart, and they are skilled. But most of all, always, they are driven by an important mission. But here's the deal. Like secret agents, you and I have been given a mission. But unlike those secret agents that you read about or you see in the movies, our mission is not a secret. And secret identities are not one of our tactics. In fact, in order to complete our mission, we can't wear disguises. We have to be real. So what is our mission. You might have an idea of what this mission is that I'm talking about, but for followers of Christ, our mission is to share our faith and make disciples, which is essentially followers of Christ who make other followers of Christ. It sounds pretty simple, but sadly, it's difficult enough that not a lot of us do it or do it well. You know, there's a lot of things that Jesus told his disciples to do, to care for the poor and the sick, to love our enemies, and to pray for each other. But Jesus also gave his followers one big mission. I want you to look at these verses. This is Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. It's referred to as the Great Commission, and it says this, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you to the very end of the days. These were the last words that Jesus spoke to his disciples. So he know that they're important. And even though they were spoken over 2,000 years ago to a different country and culture, and group of people. They're still relevant to us today. And if you know Jesus, this is your mission. Go and share the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. 
make disciples like the, the Great Commission talks about. So let me ask a question. How do you feel about sharing your faith with others? Why do you think that you feel that way? Seriously, I would love your input on this. If you're watching right now, uh, comment. How, how do you feel? Why do you feel that way? Maybe you feel excited. Maybe you feel scared. Maybe you don't feel prepared or you're simply just not interested. Cape, how, how do you feel? Man, hey, uh, for me, man, it's probably that scared. I'm a little nervous. And then the other thing is I, I feel incredibly burdened, like responsible to do it. Somebody yeah. did it for me. Absolutely. I, I, I resonate with that that deeply. Um, it can be scaring, scary, but it can also be exciting, especially when one of your friends uh, is interested in it. Mm. But here's the deal. This week, Pape and I, we're going to post this question as a poll on our Instagram. We would love for you to find it and to vote for how you feel about your mission. And here's the deal. Be honest. Don't just choose the right answer. Choose what is true to you. We're going to check back in next week with that poll. Uh, we'll give you guys the the results, uh, but it's all going to be anonymous. So please answer okay. honest. But here's the deal. If you are a Christ follower, you've got to at least be interested. You know, I get that it can be scary, but we just learned in the last series that Jesus said you're worth it. And you have to decide that others are worth it, too. Jesus is the best friend that you could ever have. And it's my hope that you want Jesus to be able to be that for other people as well. But hey, and speaking of speaking of best friend challenges, of, of oh, best yeah. friend and challenges, hey, you want to do best friend challenge again? I love it. Best friend challenge. Awesome. Let me tell you about my I've best got, friend. Hey, I love how you put that, man. If you're friends with somebody, you wanna you wanna share Jesus with them. I love it. Oh man, you got the OG box. All right. Hey, OG who's box. going first? Hey, who's going first? Comment, comment along if you're watching. Let us yeah. know what you think. Go ahead and feel free to. Hey, I think maybe like I might try to do a, a something cool for the first person that comments the right answer. How about that? Right. On one of these questions. On one of them. All right, who's going first? Okay. Um, I'll go first this time. All right. Let's see. Right. See, let's see, let's see. Um, here's one that I don't think you'll be able to get about me. Okay. What was my favorite childhood TV show? Oh. Favorite. Okay. Ooh. That's going to be hard. That's going to be hard. Uh, I'll be honest. I watched a lot of TV shows when I was younger, so I had to ask. I, I actually called my mom. I'm like, "Mom, what show did I watch the most?" And and she gave me the answer. So okay. this is this is true. It's got the 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 Corey Whitson mom of approval on it. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. I I okay. I said favorite ready. TV show, not novel. I got it. I got. I didn't write. It? I, I'm. I'm ready. Oh, this right. is good. Okay. Ready? You ready? Three, two, Three, one, go. Two, one. Oh, I put Whoa. Sweet Life, and then I Sweet. threw Hannah Montana on there. <laughs> Little shout out to Miley. Sorry about that, man. So Sweet what? Life. Hey Arnold. What's Hey Arnold? What's that? Is that the turtle? No. No, that it's the. The, like the football shaped head. I missed it. All right, all right. I got one for you. All right. Oh, this is about me. This is about me. How many goals did I score at Johnson University in college soccer? Not own goals for for our team. <laughs> <laughs> Not how many goals did you take out of the net and keep playing? No. Uh, all right, go ahead. Go ahead. How many goals? How many goals? 
All right. Ready? You ready? Three, three two, two, one, go. One. Oh. <laughs> I, went, two. I went with a good holy number. I was That's how many man. yellow cards. That's how many yellow cards I got. <laughs> hey, do you ever get a red card? Ever. No. Ever. I, got, I like to play too much. If you get a red card, you can't play. But, hey, right. I appreciate that. Hey, fun fact there. The same best, the same friend, he was probably one of my best friends in college, passed me the ball both times. That's cool. It's a good friend. All right. Go ahead. All right. This one is about you and I. Oh, boy. Who has more hats? Mmm. Mmm. Who had? Go ahead and comment. Go ahead and comment. Who has more hats? Paper Corey. Paper Corey. I'm a little nervous about this because the right, the answer may not be the right answer. The obvious answer may not be the right answer. Because, you know, with my new hat uh, sponsor and all. All right. Three, all right. two. Ready? Yeah. How many hats you got, bro? Over 30. I knew it. I knew it was going to be you, but I never see you in a hat hardly. Oh, I know. Man. You, you wear them more, but I have more. I knew it. I knew it. I should have wrote you down. I knew it. All right. All right. Last one. Last, Last one. one. All right. Ooh, here, it's a good one. Oh, no, I don't like that one. All right. This is a good one. This is a good one. <laughs> Paper Corey. Who drives the nicer car? Who drives the nicer car? Paper Corey. Ooh. Who drives a nicer car? And I'll be honest, neither one of us drive real fancy cars. Right? Here we go. Here we go. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> it's a novel. You want a novel. All right. Ready? Yep. Three, Three two, two, one. Boom. Yeah, that car you got, that's a pretty good car. The real answer is Kim. She <laughs> yeah. does have that's a limo, bro. I know. The, back when I had my truck. Limo. Yeah. Oh, man, that's good. <laughs> that's good to get to know each other. That's good to get to know each other. Hey, let's get back to the, to the, to the task at hand. We are talking about um, Mission Possible, and uh, we're talking about sharing our faith. And I think one thing is for sure there's a few things that can get in the way of us sharing our faith. There was a survey done a few years ago, and they asked young people how they felt about Christianity. And this is non-church or church people, or just young people in general. And they said the number one thing they thought of when they thought about Christianity was hypocrites. Hypocrites, people that are that are fake. Yeah, that's pretty disheartening. And so here's the cool thing, though. Not that that's cool. But the cool thing is that Jesus knew that we would struggle with this. And matter of fact, in his time, um, the religious leaders struggled at it, with it as well. And so in Matthew, I'm going to read a scripture, Matthew chapter 23. If you have your handy dandy Bible, go ahead. And, and it's the first book in the New Testament, Matthew 23. I'm going to start in verse 25. And this is Jesus. He's, he's talking to the religious leaders, like the people who... Um, Make sure that people carry out the law of the Old Testament. Okay, so this was like basically the people that were telling everybody if they were good enough for, for God or not. So he goes, woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. There's that word. He says, you clean the outside of the cup and dish, but the inside, um, they are full of greed and self-indulgent. Blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside will also be clean. He goes on and says this, woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You like you are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but uh, on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside you appear uh, to people as righteous, but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. And so just to kind of set this up, he's talking about these Pharisees. And on the, on the outside, they look, they look like they're religious. They act like they're religious. 
but their heart is bad. And so uh, we don't want to be that as Christians. So Jesus talks about what our heart should be like. He tells a parable in Luke chapter 18. I'm going to, yeah, they're very good. Corey. So Luke chapter 18, I'm going to read it to you and we're going to unpack it real quick. Okay. Luke 18, I'm going to start in verse nine. He says to some who were confident in their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else. He told this, Jesus told this parable. I love how that's stated because, you know, when we're supposed to share our faith, you can't look down on people and expect them to listen to you. And so he addresses that right here. He says, two men went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, like what we talked about before, a religious leader, and the other one was a tax collector. Now, Corey, real quick, tell me one thing you know about tax collectors. Man, they stole. They were greedy. Nobody liked them and they because they stole. Right, exactly. So the Pharisee, he stood by himself off to the side and drew attention to himself said, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or either like, either, even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I give a tenth of all I get uh, to the poor. But the tax collector, in contrast, t- stood at a distance, and he would not even look up towards heaven. But he beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And I, and so the tax letter goes, man, just have mercy on me, God. I need you. And then Jesus says, I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went a home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And here's the deal. When we think about being a Christ follower and being on mission, we have a choice to make. We can either be like the Pharisee who points to themselves and talks about how great the me, me, me is, or we can be like the tax collector who is humble, who and begs for mercy. And the great thing about it is that most of the time, you know, I don't want to listen to people who think they have it all together and who can identify with my weaknesses. I want to listen to the people that are real, the people like the tax collector. And the great thing that Jesus says there is, hey, that's the person who actually went away with their sins forgiven, not the Pharisee. And so you you have a choice. You know, you can mix it up. Our world is an arrogant me, me, me kind of world. But if you want to be on mission and if you want to share your faith, then you have to be humble and you have to know that you need mercy and then be willing to share that with other people. You have to you have to mix it up. You have to go on off of cue and be humble. I really like that in the in the scripture there. And so when we talk about being on mission, hey, don't be a hypocrite. Be humble. Mix it up. Yeah. You got anything to add to that? I really like yeah, I, I really like what you said there. You, you've got to mix it up. This world is just telling us, you know, be your, yourself first. Make sure you're doing everything to put yourself ahead. Um, but, man, for, for followers of God, we've got to mix it up. We've got to put um, others first, but we've, we've got to put God first. And that that's, that's huge. Hey, speaking of mixing it up. Mm-hmm. Let's do another activity. Add another one. Yeah, let's do it. This this one did not go well for me the first time. I, I had to edit some of it out because it was disgusting. <laughs> it was beautiful. Uh, but <laughs> not if you heard all of it. Uh, <laughs> what we're going to do is we are going to do another blender challenge. Blender challenge. I love it. Another blender. I'm, you're challenge. a gamer. I appreciate you being willing to try it again. I love it. I love it. Absolutely. Blender challenge. So we'll, what do we got today? Well, first off, got the blender. Yes. Make sure this thing works. Yeah. All right, it's working. Boom, boom. You got one? I, I got this little hand blender. It's ready to go by our sponsors, Hamilton Beach. Go ahead. All right, first thing I'm going to put in is some Oreos. Oreos. Okay. I'm starting hey. with I'm starting with a base of ice cream. 
Ooh. And I, I'm going to have to. But I, I've got cookies as well. Ooh. All right. Yeah. I'm going to do, tell you what, I'm going to, I'm going to put in three Oreos. Hey, and these are specialty. These are dark chocolate Oreos. So you know they're going to be good. Three. It symbolizes the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I love it. I love it. I've got exactly. There's symbolism knockoff, and everything. Knockoff Girl Scout cookies. Which kind? Um, which kind? Like what, what? Where are they knockoff of? Samoas. All Samoas. right. Yeah. yeah I've yeah. got some ice cream here that has been sitting out for about 20 minutes. So it's nice and melted. Mm. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put some of that. This in here. Look at that. Um. How many yeah. scoops should I do? Three? Father, Son, yeah. Holy Spirit again? A Amen. Amen. Yeah. Don't go 12. Right. That's another holy number. Or 40. Or 40. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. man. Got the ice cream. Okay. Okay. I'm already liking this more than last time. <laughs> as long as there's not a right. curveball, right? Okay. What next? Um, I've got some milk. You milk got milk. Got milk. Got milk. Our, our good friends. Vitamin at, at Smith Dairy. Vitamin D whole milk. Yes, absolutely. Same. Same. I think I'm at two percent. Sorry. Go Very ahead. Good. Um, you got so, anything else? I got one. I got one more. Okay. I've got we a little got. bit of chocolate syrup. Okay. I've got uh, some uh, those Hershey Kisses. I got a smidge of sprinkles. Ooh, sprinkles. Syrup. No syrup. Okay, we're okay. We're okay. <laughs> yes. Hey, I got some if you want some. Okay, yeah. Let's see. Tim's oh, mix. I even have a milkshake setting on this. So let, let's see what this does. All right. Kim's blasting it here. Oh. Oh man! Ooh. See work? it explode a little bit. Oh, it's beautiful. All right, all right. Ooh. Oh, it smells better. It smells better than last time. Oh man, this, I love my job. <laughs> <laughs> I love my job. All right, I'm gonna hey, pour you. I'm gonna sprinkle. This. I'm gonna sprinkle a little Mountain Dew in there just in case. All right. Please don't. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. Mm. Cheers. Three, two, one, go. Mm. Oh, man, that's, that's nothing, pretty good. Nothing like the blender challenge. I love it. I, love I it. am a. Uh, hey, uh, you know what I like we can do? I can do that blender challenge more. Yeah. Hey, listen, I want to challenge you right now, if you're watching to and you have Instagram to make a story and put blender challenge on it. Mission possible and tag me or Corey in it. And see how you do. And it you can do either a blender challenge like we did the first time, or you can go with the milkshake. Okay, how about that? I like that. I would suggest the milkshake. Go with I the milkshake. It's much better. Me too. Me too. Ham hasn't quite sounded the same since. All right, go ahead, bud. I Wrap us up. I haven't been able to meet mustard yet. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I was really hoping I'd get milkshake come out to nose there. Eh. All right. Here, here's the deal. Uh, we, we talked about mixing it up, right? That's what the, the blender challenge was all about. But here's the really cool thing is you don't have to be perfect to participate in God's mission. I mean, I, I don't know about you, Pape, but I, I really wish I would have found that out a lot sooner. I've struggled with trying to be perfect my entire life uh, but you don't have to be perfect to accept christ as your savior and here's the another big one you don't have to be perfect to have worth yeah i i struggled with that a lot in in high school but to, to continue on jesus left his followers with a pretty big mission to tell the whole world about him but in order to understand how to complete our mission, we can't take Jesus' words out of context. Matthew 28, the, the Great Commission, which is what I read earlier, is Jesus' summary of our mission. And real quick, 
the Great Commission is talking about taking the gospel everywhere, sharing the good news. There's a really cool organization. It's called the Joshua Project, and it's all about sharing the gospel to what they call unreached people groups, which is groups of people who have never even heard about Jesus in Christianity before. And through their research and calculations, we know that there's about 7.67 billion people in there, give or take a million or so. And that's, that's a big group. But of that group, 3.19 billion, or over 41% of the world, has never even heard about Jesus. We, we have to do better at reaching out. But it all starts where you are, with the people around you. If you're going to accept the not-so-secret mission from Christ, one of the first things that we have to do is to not be a hypocrite, like Pape was talking about. Don't pretend to be perfect when you're not. Don't pretend to know more than you do. And don't pretend to be more confident than you are. Jesus isn't looking for experts to join him on his mission. He's looking for you. You don't have to be perfect to participate in God's mission, but you do have to be real. Your mission this week is to be real. And when you're real with others, you build trust, you build relationships, and you build credibility. Well, here's a couple ways to be real. You've got to first be real with yourself. Be honest about your questions, about your weaknesses and struggles. You're not perfect, but you don't have to be. Second, be real with God. Uh, like I, I just said, you don't have to be perfect, but God has called you to imitate Jesus and let him transform you. Like the man in the parable that, that Pape read that means being honest with God when we're weak and asking for help. God, please have mercy on me. The third thing is be real with others. Don't put on the, the perfect Christian disguise because there isn't such a thing. Be honest about the ways that you're still growing, changing, and even struggling. It won't compromise the message of Jesus that you want to share. It's going to make it more real. The world needs to see the real you. People don't need to see a perfect life. They don't need to see a perfect... Uh, no, they do need to, sorry. They don't need to see a perfect you, but they need to see how a perfect Savior can work in an imperfect you and an imperfect me. So if you want to join Jesus on his mission, start here. Be real. And watch what God can do with your real and imperfect story. And I love that, Corey. I love it. You know, I think about the people that impacted me the most. They weren't the most talented. They weren't uh, the, be the most perfect people. They were just honest and real. And they gave time to me and made a tremendous impact. I bet you would say the same thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Man, it makes me think about our youth workers, you know, uh, the, our partners in the gospel, you know. None of them are perfect, but they're willing. You know, they, they're not hypocrites. They're just willing um, and real. I love it. I love it. Very good, man. Hey, I'm pretty pumped about this series because, you know, when you were thinking about that Joshua project, I started thinking about what if one of those high voltage knuckleheads that's been coming every Wednesday, what if one of them grows up and takes an unreached people group and prays for them and even eventually becomes a missionary? That would be so awesome. That would be so awesome. So, hey, what we got going this week? Speaking of high voltage, what do we got, man? Yeah. Speaking of high voltage, man, we've got high voltage on Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Uh, man, join us for the Zoom. It's been a lot of fun. We've had a, a bunch of really great kids come on. Last week, we had a, a scavenger hunt where um, somebody even won a, a $10 Domino's gift card. So nice. that's, that's a, a lot of fun. Um, and man, pizza is always good, too. 
So, hey, join us on Wednesdays at 4 o'clock for Zoom. The, the, the link will be sent out Wednesday afternoon. Right. Right. Hey, and just like the, the high voltage, we've been um, Zooming on Sunday night with the high school youth group. Um, uh, so Sunday nights at seven, we put it out on social media. You can either, uh, and we'll text it, the link to you. Um, and either one of those on Wednesday, if you don't get that link, message us on social media, reach out to us, and we'll make sure you get that link. We'd love to have you. Love to see you there. It's good to be together, Absolutely. even when we can't be together. Absolutely. Hey, on Sundays, we've got our, our live stream, 945 and 11 o'clock. Man, I got to watch that Sunday morning, and I loved it. Um, here, getting to hear Mulpus and, and Pate, two incredible speakers, but also being able to worship alongside with Jonathan and the worship arts team. Uh, you can really yeah. see and feel how, how God is moving and working even when we're not together. Um, yep. And on Mondays as well for our, our Sunday school, our Monday school, that's what, what this is. Um, hope that you're enjoying this, getting uh, some scripture out of it, and we hope that you invite others and continue to be a part of it. Yeah, I like that, man. Do us a favor and share this. That'd be awesome. Hey, uh, CIY, we got a deadline. Actually, when you see this, it'll be past the deadline, and we've got some decisions to make on CIY, um, and so we're going to be making those announcements probably in the week to come, but that's June uh, 22nd through the 27th. Um, it's always a good time. And um, no matter what happens this year, we'll still have a good time. It'll be awesome. Absolutely. Hey, on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're, we're having uh, some posts. This is where you're going to see the poll from uh, Pape yeah. and I, either on Tuesday or Thursday. So be looking for that. Please vote on it. Hey, and Wednesdays and Fridays, we've got 60-second shots of encouragement from some leaders. Um, those have been awesome as well, especially the ones um, that we've got our, our small group or Sunday school teachers to do. I've, I've loved those. Um, one, one other thing for me, uh, Mission Indy, July 19th through the 25th. I just talked to Mission Indy this week. Uh, they said that they're still in the waiting game, but they're hoping and praying that we're still going to be able to meet uh, the week that we have registered to go. So if you want to go to that, um, go online. Uh, we would love to be able to have you go with us. Yep. Last but not least, uh, Round Lake for fifth and sixth graders. This is my week of camp that I'm going to. Randy Reed um, does an excellent job uh, putting that together. So it's July the 12th through the 17th. Um, you can go to Round Lake's website and get the information there. Also, we have a scholarship code that you can use. I know this right now, though, to reserve your spot, you don't have to pay a deposit. They're not making you pay a deposit. So um, I know things are up in the air this summer, and we're going to try to uh, get some answers as quickly as we can. I think uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll definitely have some clearer pictures on what the summer is going to look like. But go ahead and mark your calendar on that. That's going to be awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining us today for Monday School. Um, hey, I hope that you remember to not be a hypocrite, but be real. God doesn't need perfect. He, he needs you. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Corey. Hey, have a good day, man. Thank you. You as well. See you, everyone. See all you cool cats and kittens later. <laughs>